Hi, I'm Sharon Ryan. I'm a WVU philosopher and I'm the creator of The Question. And we're talking about the value of art today. I'm here with Eli Pollard, who's a professor in the Humanities program. He teaches the Western Civ sequence and he also is developing a course on the humanities of rock and roll, the impact of rock and roll on art and culture. And he has a master's in fine arts from SUNY Buffalo and he's also an accomplished painter. So Eli, what is the value of art? So uh, if we're looking at the value of art, I would say it would be important first of all to uh, look at what we're examining, which is the artwork itself, and ask or look at the question again, what is art? Um, Traditionally, we, we've, people have looked at artwork as being um, uh, some sort of handmade object by an artist, a painting or a sculpture or something along those lines. Um, and then we've moved forward to printing, printmaking, and photography, which have both slowly become uh, accepted as, as artworks as well, um, although hesitantly still. Um, and we, if we try to uh, then further t then um, remove the hand of the artist and uh, look at simply um, appropriation. We would look at Marcel Duchamp uh, in 1917. Uh, and just a little background, uh, Marcel Duchamp was, uh, he's considered to be a part of the Dada movement, who are absurdists, we'll say, or a part of an anti-art movement. And what he did was um, he took a men's urinal and then uh, placed it in a gallery uh, as part of an exhibition where there were no uh, jurors. So uh, the idea here was anything, uh, or the way he took it at least, anything goes, right? Uh, but then the, uh, the artwork was denied. They, they said, you know, this is not art. And in the process of, of pushing this uh, idea, right, um, he's, he then expands the boundaries of what art can be. Um, and then there's a long, rich tradition that continues of this pushing of the boundaries of, of what is art. If we then go and try to take away um, a step further, um, not just with appropriating, because appropriation has been taken pretty far ends with people. Uh, there's a, a group called the Art Guys out of Texas, a little more recent. And they've, what they've done is they've gone to parties and they've taken people's stuff, right? Uh, just kind of uh, reaching behind them. Uh, taking something. Then they have a show and they put it on a pedestal and a price tag on it and invite everybody from the parties to come and you know buy their work back. So that you know that's that's one end there. But then if if we uh, try to uh, then eliminate the object in some way a little bit uh, further, we can uh, open ourselves up. Then and I think most people have at this point to sounds or music, right, as being artwork or theater, or film, uh, literature, of course, these sort of things. And I think that's. Um, you know, broadened us, of course, that much more. Um, but the question is, with with these um, performances, then would be, um, do they, they still have documentations? Um, the art guys did a, 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 a performance here. If we're talking about, I'm kind of jumped ahead, but if we're talking about performance art, or uh, a little step beyond theater, and we look at Marcel, go back to Marcel Duchamp, maybe we should first. Uh, he gave up uh, ready mades even, or making art for playing chess, and eventually he said, um, you know, all artists are not necessarily, um, don't necessarily play chess, but all people who play chess are artists, so it brings it back to a conceptual form, it's an idea, it's a thought process, and um, here there's no documentation necessarily of the chess games, uh, there's just uh, a thought, so if we, if we you know, kind of expand on this a little bit, uh, we could then go and say, um, well, if, if an action can be an artwork and it doesn't need to be any sort of object attached to it or documentation, then all life itself could be an artwork, just uh, activities or uh, thinking or speaking. There may not need to be uh, an object attached to it. Um, and if all art is life, um, then any, or potential, or excuse me, if all life is potentially art, and then everybody's potentially an artist, right? So um, what we end up asking ourselves then would be um, more, what is the value of life, right? In that line of thinking, right? So, um, and to get back to that, if we, if we go back to what we traditionally see as art and we go uh, a little further back and say a survey art history course uh, through Western eyes, 
um, we'll look at cave paintings and what's the what was the value of cave paintings? What was the value of that work, work to the people? And of course, we speculate because um, we're looking back to uh, caves in France many many years ago. And for them, uh, for the artist, for the creator, it was to make the um, intangible tangible. And what was intangible for them was food. Maybe at the time, their basic instincts were survival. Right? So they're making cave paintings, and the uh, process of uh, drawing animals or, or painting animals with burnt bones and, and earthen, uh, well, we're not going to get into the materials too much, but, you know, they're, they're making animals and we'll find uh, spearheads in the walls br broken off. So they're uh, hunting as well, and it's a, a ritual, a way of uh, s ensuring a successful hunt, right? Um, and we'll see layers of animals that look like they're perhaps mating and then producing more animals or more food for them. And then there's a, a long progression from there as well. So the value that then, again, for the, for the artist would be to um, take the, um, this uh, intangible and make it in some way tangible. And what they may be looking at, this vision that they may be trying to solidify in some way, can be hopefully progressed beyond survival in some way, but uh, could be uh, a, a spiritual, uh, kind of looking into a spiritual realm or an emotional realm with, say, uh, Mark Rothko's paintings and just a pure expression of, say, joy or um, despair, that sort of thing, or more of a societal vision, uh, an idea um, of what society is like, a, um, a pro showing a process of modernization, say, uh, through the work. And uh, then we look at the viewer and what the value is for the viewer of a work of art, and we could say... Um, You know, it's it's a way, and, and some and some people will look at artwork as a as a mirror to society, right? It's a way of looking at uh, the the rich history of, of human existence, um, and then we could go further to say that the value here could then be a dialogue, right? A dialogue with all of this work that's that's come out over the past, and um, so we're not only uh, finding value through a discernible eye, finding some quality that we are drawn to in this, uh, in some in any particular work of art, and again, music, film, etc., but then responding to it, right? So there's a, a dialogue that's established between, um, you know, somebody who's uh, created something and uh, somebody who has then um, uh, contemplated in some way other people's work and then responded to it for the next generation to then come back and look to.